What's good, YouTube? Jimmy the Kid Zero Zero here. It's Wednesday, and that means it's time for the first episode of Play Like a Pro. Now, as you will see in the title, I'm going to bring you the first segment on materials. Literally, when you rock up to a table to play a game, or to do, you know, when you're like, hey man, you want to see my trades? This is vi this is a video that's going to talk about the stereotypical way to look as professional as possible. Before I go into this, I have no wants to be a pro player with the spell ground mat and all that jazz. I just pick up what I think is nice, so I'm going to give my opinions and then I'm going to give you guys what is the pro thing to have. So this may anger some people, may not. Let's get into it. Uh, well, I'm surrounded by stuff here, so I'm going to start off with the first thing, which is kind of the most fundamental thing for me as a player, which is, oh this is going to be heavy. Playmats, yay! Now, the most common thing you will see for most starting out players is this mat. Absolutely nothing at all, which I absolutely despise. I can't stand not playing on a mat because on most tables you'll either demolish your sleeves, demolish your unsleeved cards, never play unsleeved, or you'll just. It, it's really not that nice. So, the first thing most people will turn to is one of these things nowadays. Uh, released like last year, these were. Um, the play mats that came with the Gold Series Pyramids Edition, or as at my locals we call them, the scrub mats, which one of the best players still uses. It's just absolutely, it's, it does the job, but other than that, it's not that nice. It's really small as well. I know the Japanese use ones this big, but eh, I don't consider that very stylish. The next level of mat, in my opinion, is the custom play mat. This was my first play mat, Stardust Dragon, because it contains my favourite monster, and I'm covering my face. Um, and it's just, it, I mean, it does the job. It's nice, the quality is a bit worse than Konami mats, but these are a good first step, especially if you want something personalised, but I don't think the print quality on them is as good. Uh, moving on to kind of the staple one, which I feel most people should use, is the sneak peek mat. I have a few of these, they're absolutely great, the quality of them is amazing. This is the one I recently won, um, I really like it. It's old, but the quality on it is still great. Um, I also have one of these. Now this is where, on the kind of sneak peek mats you're getting towards the professional th professionalism, it looks good, it looks neat, tidy, you look like a competent player who's been doing this for a while, you look like you've won a sneak peek, it gives that idea that you are a good player and you're invested in the game. Uh, next up we have the winner mat mats. These either demonstrate you have a lot of money to blow on eBay or you won them at YCS, which means you've attended big events. Now that gives another, you know, it's also something you don't really see as much, which gives you that wow factor. It's a really nice mat. This is my girlfriend. She gets a lot of comments on it. You know, it's, it's a good mat. And then finally, I have my Nationals mat. I do believe it's Nationals. I bought this. I, I didn't win it. It just gives that air of professionalism. It looks really nice. Yeah, it has the World Championship Qualifier logo on it. It is just... It is a very nice mat. Sorry, there's people out in the corridor and it's, it's putting me off. Um, but yeah, this this is the mats that I have, and then finally the quote pro mat that the pros use is the Spellground mat, which is so magical that I don't have one. They're expensive. I don't like them. I like my I like my flash designs. I don't like Spellground mats. So play mat wise, Spellground mats are the stereotypically best mat because it allows you to grave spread and it's it's got a nice texture to it apparently. Personally, I prefer the Konami official mats, the more prestigious the better really just the nice designs but ultimately it's what you guys want to pick but the pro mat is definitely the spell ground mat and then they'll usually have a decent Konami mat laid underneath it when they fold it over to stop it getting damaged on the table so you need two mats to have a spell ground mat Ooh. Uh, next up let's get on to, oh I'm looking at all the piles around me, let's go with deck boxes alright let's start with this one, um, I don't know much about these deck boxes this one was won at Battle of the Kingdoms and my girlfriend bought it off of one of the top top 16 players. They're nice, this is really leathery, it's really shiny, it's it's very nice and it's got like a fabric-y inside so it gives a lot of protection to your stuff. I, I honestly advise using deck boxes because I see some people rock up to tournaments with tins TINS? With the decks in the tins? That's a no-no, play from boxes. Uh, this is an official Konami one but I've also got Ah, this is a little Pokemon one that my girlfriend picked up. It's nice, does the job, but you can't actually fit a deck and a side deck in it, so you've got to get something generous. Um, my personal kind of staple deck, uh, staple boxes are by Max Pro. I have these two from my youth, which I now just use for storage. 
They have nice little designs on them. They come with deck, uh, deck dividers, like these ones that go in them, which allow you to just, like separate your side and your uh, your main because often your side will be in the same sleeves. But I prefer boxes like this. The Velcro admittedly does wear out, so try and gravitate towards the magnetized ones. There are also versions of the Ultra Pro boxes like this that don't have Velcro. They actually kind of pop open. I don't like those because I feel like they'll break very quickly. So I don't really advise the Ultra Pros, and they don't really look that professional. They're very, very bland. I mean, these are quite nice. I know I've seen people using double boxes this size, you know, pros using double duck boxes this size. So I advise these for people starting out because they give you good protection, good price, things like that. Um, and then the box which I prefer to use, that I see a lot of professional players using, is the 5D's official box that they brought out, I think, two years ago, which came kind of doubled up with space for two decks, and it comes with a divider for each draw. And these even come out, you've got, you can fit a rule book in the, f sorry, I'm, I'm doing it down here in my lap. Uh, you can fit a rule book in the front, it's just great. I, it gives a very professional aura, and it's a very nice box overall, with a very nice design and all the circuitry all over it. So I definitely feel this is a good box to use. Uh, let's move on to binders. Alright, the first binders I actually usually see on people are stuff like these, these the four size binders. Uh, this one is by SAS Protection. It's a very good binder, but I, uh, I hate these kind of transparent pages. I hate them because they're very loose. They're very easy to steal from, so at major events, these are just so easy to steal from. Uh, again, with these with these Ultra Pro Collector's albums, it's, it's all the same. It's nice, but I'd only advise it at locals, and it doesn't really look all that professional unless you sleeve everything, because the pockets are too big, and... Uh, they're all right, but they're not that nice. Uh, moving on, we have the bigger versions of them. Again, the same problem arises because if you if I turn to a page, I mean it looks nice enough, doesn't it? But ultimately, everything's very loose. Everything's really easy to get at. Dirt can get in them really easily, and I could just steal half of this. I mean, I'm not a thief, but it's really easy to do from these binders. I test all my binders to see how likely it is I'll get stuff stolen from me. So I mean, these and the binders by Max Pro really do the trick if you're like a locals goer, you're not going to major events and you trust your friends but for any big events I really wouldn't advise these, I'd advise some binders I'm about to get onto. Right now onto the binders which I really call tanks. Alright this is the Ultra Pro binder, um, a lot of people have these, a lot of professional players have these they're very good, very affordable, I think they're £15 to £20 and they are really good, they Re they're unlikely to open and get damaged in your bag because of this cross strap which I really quite like. Um, inside all the pages are much more reinforced, they've got this fabric backing which stops stuff getting damaged. Um, the one thing that I have noticed about these, uh, also, also this is much harder to steal from because the, pa the pages are quite tight and it's quite hard to get into the pockets to the cards. I'm even having trouble doing this on camera now. They're, always, they're also from the side so if you accidentally put your binder in the in your bag upside down, which I've done with Ultra Pro Binder, everything isn't going to end up in the bottom of the bag and get damaged. It's very hard to knock stuff out of these binders. Very hard indeed. Um, they're also really reinforced, and it's really unlikely that your cards will get dirty or damaged. But in the Ultra Pro Binders, I find that they're made of a different kind of plastic from Monster, which I'm going to get onto soon, which seems to take grease a lot more. I'm not sure if you can see this, but I feel the pages kind of get a little bit greasy after a while from just use, from like hands touching them and stuff like that. They're still, they are very good, reliable, I would definitely recommend these because monster, monster binders are out of production and cost a fortune. But these, if you want to look semi-pro, these are a good binder to use, definitely recommend it. Uh, and then let's get on to the main event. These are monster binders, these were produced by a German company uh, a good few years ago and they are quote the professional binder I believe. Because this is the binder that everyone uses, it's an absolute tank, you can hear that noise just of those pages. It's got a stab proof cover, stab proof. Um, the pages are all segmented. They're very hard to bend. Well, I'm not gonna try it, but they're quite hard to bend. Um, they're very tight, very hard to steal from. Uh, they don't get dirty anywhere near as much as other things. And they just, I mean, look at how nice everything looks in there. It just looks really quite nice. This definitely provides the most professional aura, I feel, for your stuff. Pro these, I feel. Ultra Pro? No. Monster Pro. Um, 
finally, but not the kind of least, I just dropped it anyway because I've been balancing it all the way over here on like a bed, a folded up bed, is your sleeve choices. Um, these are Ultra Pro sleeves. If you can hear the noise, they're quite rough compared to say Max Protection and Player's Choice. Um, also the, the issue with them is they have, if you can see on the corners of them, the top right corners up here, they have these little holograms which is kind of like distracting from the card. I really don't like that. These would be much better products if they didn't have the holograms that say Ultra Pro on them. Um, but they're very good. They don't really attract dirt that easily. I quite like them. They're very tight on the cards which looks very nice. Uh, but ultimately, these card these sleeves are very susceptible to damage along the sides and the corners. They bend very easily on the corners, and they take a lot of damage. These aren't really regarded as the professional sleeves, but I really like them. They're very cheap, very affordable. So for medium players, I would definitely recommend these. They're very good sleeves. But for like pro players and American players, I know you guys have more access to sleeves other than Ultra Pro. I would recommend the sleeves I'm about to come to. Um, I only have one of these. This is a max protection sleeve. Um, this is a yellow one, but I feel that most of the max protection sleeves are very thin. Some of them aren't really cut very nicely, and they're also quite large compared to your cards. I don't like them. They're very damageable. Max protection is a bit of a no-no for me. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to take this off. I'm actually very hot now. I closed all the windows to do the video because it was loud outside, and I realized it's getting really warm. Um, and then finally, kind of, this is my main choice of sleeve. This is a player's choice sleeve. Um, to look at it, it's very smooth on the back side. Um, I'm just going to actually grab a few of them. They shuffle really well. They make less of a noise. They make that professional noise that you always you always hear in in you know whenever a guy's sat there going hmm, which is actually a, a segment I'm going to do. The guys who sit there going shuffling their hands like I do, compulsively. Um, but ultimately these are the sleeves which I recommend. They don't have the holograms on them, which is great. They're very nice, very smooth, they don't take damage much. Um, they're quite bad for me because I have kind of naturally clammy hands sometimes, and they get a little bit kind of nasty, but what these do. Uh, but ultimately I definitely recommend these as your pro choice of sleeves. So yeah, let's, let's round this all off now. That's everything that I've gone through for materials. That's everything I have. Also, there's those acrylic sleeves with the cool dragons and everything like that. Don't buy them. They get nasty really quick. They're everything bad about all the sleeves I just talked about. They get nasty quick. They get damaged quick. They split. It's horrible. Don't buy them. I, if, you're, if you're a low-grade player, yeah, get them, but I really don't like them. I definitely recommend blank sleeves and let the mat do the talking. So let's round this all off. To be a quote stereotypical pro player, you need a spellground mat. Oh, I haven't talked about this in a minute, but I'll get uh, I'll get to it in a minute. You need a spellground mat or a nationals mat to lie yourself.